And we're doing a little uh, exploring today, but the, the title of this one is uh, Words Are Powerful. Amen. They are powerful. And really, if you're going to be in James, uh, we'll be in James chapter 1 and James chapter 3 this morning. And of course, I'll be uh, on the screen as well to find it. But I started thinking about uh, how words are so powerful. Amen. Uh, this week, uh, I know, uh, boy, someone got a call. And uh, boy, the other person on the, I know you guys never had this problem. I know that you guys always keep your cool. And yet, uh, this person, uh, boy, they, they got a phone call. And then, uh, boy, the person on the other line, boy, they just yell, yell. Y'all never get that, do you? Y'all never whatsoever. And boy, another one started yelling. And uh, boy, it just it didn't go really well. And then finally, they both hung up. They're all hung up. Uh, and uh, just looking from outside in, I was like, oh my. And uh, that, you kind of have to watch your tongue a little bit. Mm, and that's like, mm, I know, I know, but still. But it got me to think how much words are powerful. Amen. Especially when they're thrown at people. Amen. Amen. And uh, so I thought, man, Lord, there's got to be a message in this. But it's so important for us to be careful with our words. As born again Christians, hey, that we're going to be a light in God's uh, world. Uh, to be a, a soldier in God's army. We have to be careful with our words. If you've got your Bibles, James chapter 1, verse 19. And therefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak and slow to wrath. Last night we had a, a call to, to go to. Of course, people weren't getting along. And so uh, I got there. And that story that uh, I told you guys about that little boy and uh, boy how he was being angry and uh, he, he Busted a, a window, his his grandmother's window, car window, and she said, "I just had it. I had it with him." And the story, uh, I said, "Well, okay." I said, "I'll tell you what." Uh, I said, "Let me show you where you're going to go if you don't change your ways." So, anyways, I took him to, to the jail, and I let him, I let him look. I said, "Do you want to be in this place?" And boy. People in there, boy, they started yelling and screaming and, and you know, got his attention. And uh, afterwards, got done, he said, I, I don't, I don't want to be there. And I said, I hope, and I pray, I said, I hope you change uh, your ways. I gave him some encouraging words. I said, if not, I said, four years will go by fast. I said, four years will go by fast. Trust me. And as you get older, life, y'all know it will go by faster and faster. I said, and if you don't change your ways, you will end up in this place. I said, you're sharing things with people. I said, you don't have your privacy. I said, somebody who's always watching. Well, I started thinking this way. I said, I wonder how he's doing. I, I, I gave him my number. I said, hey, if you need me, call me. And uh, I just started. He was on my heart. Uh, this week, and I was like, man, I wonder where he is. And I said, I, I wonder if the words I gave him was encouraging. And well, last night we had a call. Uh, people weren't getting along. So we arrived on the situation, and the party uh, got out. You know, There's still some people there. They told us what was happening, and all of a sudden, the boy came around the corner. He, and he had smiled on his face and said, you remember me? I said, I sure do. Reached out my hand. I shook his hand. I said, how you been? I said, I was somehow, somehow I've been thinking about you. He said, I'm doing better. I said, really? I said, well, how's school going? Well, school's not doing too good. I've been in a little trouble, but, but I, I, I'm, I'm not changing. I said, uh, are you sure? He said, I am. He said, uh, 
He said, I'm trying to get the same situation, things happen, you know, over in this state. And he said, I, that one got dropped. And I said, well, that's the grace of God, you know. And uh, he said, but I, I'll tell you what, he said, uh, he told me a little scenario. And I said, man, I mean, what did we talk about uh, last time I was with me? I don't know. He said, I'm going to straighten up, and I am. And he said, uh, I said, well, how's your grandma? And uh, she said, oh, she's doing good. I said, well, how's the window? I got, he said, I'm straightening that out too. There were some chores around the house. I, I, I told her, I said, Bill. So he said, uh, he said I'm straightening up. I'm, I'm going to do a lot better. I said, I, I, I hope so. He said, your words encourage me. I said, really? He said, I don't, I don't want to end up where you showed me. And I said, well, I said, stay in there. Stay and get your education. Do what you need to do. I said, if you want to, you can always leave this town. After you graduate from high school, go to college, or do whatever. Do make a difference in life. And he said, oh, I am. He said, uh, what you showed me. And so we were able to talk a little bit. Uh, like I said, there was four officers there, so I was able to put him aside and talk with him. But yet, how we need to be swift to hear. And slow to speak. Sometimes our mouth just needs to be closed. Because words are powerful. Are they going to be encouraging? Or are they going to downright push someone down? All right. James chapter 3, verse 2. You know where we get our words from? If you, if you ever, hopefully you don't, but if you ever got, rot, or got rid of your tongue, it's hard to talk, isn't it? But how it's so important, verse 2, for in many things we often all, if any man offend not in word, but the same is a perfect man, and able also to bridle the whole body. Behold, we put a bit in a horse's mouth, that they may obey us, and we turn to their whole body. Verse 4, Behold also the ship, which though they are great and big in size, they are driven by fierce wind, yet are they turned about with a small rudder, whithersoever the governor listed. In verse 5, here we go. Even so, the tongue is a little member, but boasteth great. Behold, our great matter of a little fire kindled. Verse 6. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members. That is, defileth the whole body, set it on fire of the course of nature. And it is set on fire as hell. Isn't that amazing <coughs> that what your words, when they leave your mouth, can you ever give them, get them back? And now you can apologize all you can, but let me ask you something. Can words hurt? I think they can. Have you ever, maybe, Gotten a long time, or you just out and doing your tasks, and all of a sudden, oh man, I remember so and so said something to me. It wasn't very nice. Y'all yeah, remember that? Or maybe a child of their parents being mean to them, and yet they remember years down the road. Oh, I remember what you said. How our words are so powerful. They're so powerful. They can either bring someone up, encourage a little child, Amen. or yet they can beat them Amen. up. What we say and what we do makes a whole lot of difference. Like I said, many of times, boy, click, click, I'm going to take you somewhere. And let me tell you something, I hear the words are coming out left and right. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, down the road, I get to see them again. 
Man, I, I apologize. I shouldn't have said what I said. Oh, that's all right. No, 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 you don't understand. I said, I do. He said, not he or she. I, I needed that. There's many times I, people said, hey, I needed uh, something to wake me up. Or whenever they come, I remember I was a animal control officer and I was dealing with a, a dog. And yet, uh, the owner came out because he was mad about this stray dog. And boy, he raised and came. Let me tell you something. I was there to do my job. I finally got the animal. And yet, I did call for backup because he was really aggressive uh, talking about the owner or the person. And uh, he's telling me, you need, to get, you need to do your job. And I said, well, I'm doing my job if you uh, let me just do it. Well, long story short, uh, he came back a day or two. And he said, I apologize. He said, I, I shouldn't have said what I said. And I'm so sorry. Boy, he, shook, he handed out his hand. I shook his hand. I said, don't worry about it. It's fine. He said, no, you don't understand. I apologize, truly. And he said, well, he apologized. Yeah, but sometimes the words sometimes are still in your mind, right? Be careful. Because the devil will use that and say, hey, he may apologize, but remember what he said. What are we doing with our words? Well, they're so powerful. Well, I don't abuse that person uh, physically, but yet, are we encouraging that person? Did you know you can be abused and it can be just from a words? That's right. Amen. It's so important. Proverbs chapter, I don't have it up there, but Proverbs chapter 12, verse 18. The words of the reckless pierce like a sword, but the tongue of the wise brings healing. I'm amazed at the scriptures. And if you go on and on, there's many, much more. Because words are so powerful. Yeah. They can slice you. Have you ever experienced that? Maybe you got words that, mm, boy, they hurt. They hurt so much. I know I have. Mm -hmm. But yet, have you had words of advice or encouragement. Oh, I didn't do good. I just, hey man, that was a great game you did. Know, you know, I remember I, me at the band concert playing, going you know, through middle school and high school. And boy, I remember being up there and we're playing away, and yet I missed a note or I do this or I didn't come in where I was supposed to. And yet after the concert, I get, I see mom and, and I see a grandma down there. And they say, oh, it, it's good. I mean, y'all did a wonderful, no, you don't understand. <laughs> I missed a note, I did this, no, oh, you did good. I'm proud of you. No, you don't understand. I had this part and it just, and one time my grandma asked me, she said, why do you do that? Like, what do you mean? I encourage you because you did a good job. Wonderful job. The whole band did. But yet, every time I throw something good towards you, you're coming back with a negative word. She says, when you do that, I have to put double or triple enough words to encounter that one bad word. I'm not saying language but the negativity that you're doing to yourself yes yes because guess what don't y'all hear that phrase you'll you'll hear about the bad stuff a lot quicker than you hear the good stuff right amen words are so powerful so what are we doing i'm preaching that myself y'all especially when we interact with the world. A boy, they can slice. 
through our hearts like a sword or they can bring people together strengthen one another build each other up what I loved it because words are so important even though the action is remember when Jesus was on the cross remember when he says forgive them Well, they don't know what they've done. Jesus, are you with torture? Come on now. That's what I'm thinking. And that's what I tell God I, I do. God, I know what you're saying, but man, when you have serious time with God, sometimes you go in deep conversation. I do. I'm like, I know what he's done, but yet, Instead of getting mad, instead of sending thousands of angels, in his heart he says, forgive them. Out of love. And his action was out of love. Boy, what soothing words to me. If Jesus says, forgive them that persecute him, Lord, we Forgive them that persecute us. Have you ever encountered something where people were just being negative, but you decide I'm not going to, I'm not going to be that low, and just keep on throwing positive things? <clears throat> I saw this little uh, example. Someone had a pitcher of water, and the little jar was just dirt. Dirty water. So they said that. They kept on pouring and pouring. And they said, you may not see it now, but keep on watching. Watching this jar of dirty water. And what happens? Eventually, it turns clean, doesn't it? Well, that's the same with our words. And just like when I, I, I messed up on that note messed up on my didn't do that that's how God is with us mm -hmm. encouraging us daily yeah. are we encouraging others mm -hmm. oh boy that person on the phone get on my nerves <laughs> but yet if you encounter them with kind words she's not in here but any time she's done that, boy, they're yelling or they getting at her. I apologize. We'll, we'll, we'll fix it. We'll see what the problem is. And then all of a sudden, they call back. I want to tell you, I, I apologize. She'll say, no, it's okay. It's all right. No, no, you don't understand. I am sorry. And I can't take it back. Have you ever heard that? I can't take it back. But I'll try to make it right. What God tells us to do, oh, be slow. Quick to listen, slow to speak. Shoot, that's so hard. It's so hard to do. I know it is. I can only imagine it was hard. If you could see the future, like Jesus, knowing his plan from birth all the way up to the cross. He knew what he had to do, and he did it. Even when he, in that final hour, he prayed, let this pass for me. I know I'm paraphrasing. Anyway, any other way, let it be. But there was not another way. Words are powerful. Either they encourage one another, strengthen as a family, or they can destroy and break each other. Let's pray.